I see a lot of people in the client world that are frustrated about, about COVID. They're trying to figure out, is this something that I get into? Is this something that I, I just try to ignore until we get back to talking about climate change? Um, and what I've seen is that people that, that work in the climate and people that work in the carbon are drawn to these big planetary scale challenges. So I get it that there's this, there's this draw to working on this, on this new challenge. Um, so I want to share some of the stuff I've learned from uh, co-creating the COVID accelerator, uh, working on negative and working on these kind of two big challenges at the same time. Um, and, and figuring out like, yeah, what, what insights can I, can I bring into my own kind of daily work and what, what of these insights might translate back to, to more climate action? Here's a few of the things I've learned. I've learned about connecting to existing groups. I've learned about thinking at a high level. I've learned about staying connected every day to my friends. Uh, I've learned about intuition and trusting my intuition. I've learned about letting go of expectations of other people. So I'm gonna share a couple stories about each one of those things, because these are things that I've learned from, uh, from my work on, on COVID so far. And these are things I think that are, are useful today and tomorrow. And I think these are things that are also gonna get rolled into uh, all of my work on, on climate solutions. Um, so connecting with existing groups has been so powerful. I mean, just, just more and more groups like COVID Accelerator, Helpful Engineering, which is a group of 14,000 plus engineers who are all interested in working on solutions to the COVID challenge. Uh, you can check out helpwithcovid.com. Uh, that's a group that Sam Altman helped spur along, which is just a it's a list of all these projects and how you can volunteer for them. Um, and I love what the X Prize is doing. They've launched this kind of pandemic platform uh, to, to help connect all these big resources and everybody who has a, a piece of a solution to help connect those puzzle pieces together. So next, I learned a lot about high level thinking, right? Like in, in any space, it's good to go, it's good to go deep. Uh, and really understand the technical aspects of a topic, but it's also really important to have that kind of that T shape that other people have referred to, where it's like you want to understand kind of the the broad scheme of things, but you also want to understand deeply, you know, one or maybe multiple topics. So for for COVID, for example, that's been at least for me and my mental framing is around is around testing and, and monitoring and understanding who has what, um, but it's also around around treatment in terms of uh, ventilators and, and other medical devices. Um, and it's also around prevention, like masks and protective equipment. Um, so that's kind of how I'm thinking about it and, and learning that, you know, that high level frame is really powerful to go back to when things are changing so, so, so fast. Like with, like with testing for me, I've had to kind of initially focus a lot on that, but now as it starts to just spread that, that testing aspect is, is a lot less of my focus than some of these other areas. Um, the other thing is, and this kind of relates to, uh, to, to the high level thinking is, is intuition. When, when things are changing really rapidly, you might get a sense of like, gosh, maybe I should change this in a big way. And what I've found in the, in the last couple of weeks is that that's just over and over rewarded. Just if, if you get some intuition or a sense that is your brain and all your thinking and all your, you know, all your action is, is trying to tell you something. And so just by, by just kind of going with it, and, and maybe it means that you toss something away, or maybe it means you double down on just one piece of it. For example, I started out going all in on testing, right? DNA testing was something I knew a lot about, but there was a point about a week or so ago where testing seemed like it just wasn't as important, or at least for me, my, my intuition said, you know, testing, it's all spreading. There's community cases everywhere. Testing seems like maybe there's something else that's that's more useful. So I started to, to read up on ventilators and other treatment type equipment. How do you care for people that are sick? We assume that a lot of people are sick. There's a lot of people that aren't even tested that are sick. How do we help care for, for them? And by leaning into that intuition, I got to make a lot of progress, learn about people that are, that are working on these designs and learn about what, what, uh, what can move the needle and, and what can't. So, um, you know, by, by leaning into that, that intuition, I think, especially when things are changing really fast, you just do yourself a service by opening up to, to new ideas. Um, that said, testing is still super important. Uh, and a buddy of mine is working on a home testing initiative that you can check out here. There's a, um, 
a call to, to help uh, kind of make regulations for home testing easier. So check that out. Um, yeah, I've also found that like daily connections with either you know, people around me, my friends, but also people that are, that are working in the space is really important. So with the COVID accelerator, every day at 10 a.m., uh, we have a thing called COVID and coffee. And it's just a chance for people to get together. And we try to just talk and introduce ourselves to strangers. It's not so much about like, here's my project and here's what I help, need help with. It's more just acknowledging that like, hey, this thing is changing every day and here's how it's changing for me. Um, so that's again like connecting with connecting with people around you. I think is really uh, is really powerful. And then, but also sort of the flip side of that is like let go of your expectations of of other people. If you're expecting somebody else to to take action, or you're expecting you know that person should do this better, don't waste more than like five percent of your time on that. Like that's cool. Like complaining is it's 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 natural. It's human. But just like make sure to keep your dashboard lit up with things that are around action, things around, you know, you're either reading about a solution uh, or you're helping promote a solution or you're helping work on something um, and you're, you're taking care of yourself, right? So, so maybe that 95% that becomes something like my friend Perrin did, which is he had a virtual dance party on Zoom, right? Like totally, totally awesome. Let go of your expectations for what other people are doing and like they say, dance like no one's watching. Um, so those are those are some of the thoughts that I've had on on whatever it is, two or three weeks of, of really uh, working on on COVID solutions. Um, and I just want to reiterate that last one of just letting go of expectations of other people. Spend your time on on yourself. Maybe that's maybe that's digital dance party. Maybe that's reading a a, a guide to how ventilators work, or, or maybe that means writing that guide. Um, so look forward to, to hearing from you about things that are, uh, things that are working. Maybe you have your own, your own tips, your own playbook for this stuff. Um, and I will, uh, yeah, keep it posted next week.